As a producer, do you ever feel stuck? Like really stuck? Like you've got no ideas? Well, it happens to everyone. But today I'm going to show you an amazing technique for overcoming writer's block and coming up with fresh new ideas. Hey guys, Dilby here. Welcome back to the channel. So everyone gets stuck. It's just part of being a creative, but it's annoying. It's frustrating and it can be a real downer, especially if you're someone who doesn't have hours of time to dedicate to the studio. Maybe you work a full-time job, maybe you're a student, you have a family, we've all got other commitments. But you dedicate some time to work on music, you sit down and nothing's coming out. Ah! This is a problem that I hear time and time again from my coaching and mentoring clients. And the technique that I'm gonna show you is one of the best ways to easily overcome this writer's block. Basically, we're gonna look for sources of inspiration from other artists' work and steal it. <laughs> so I can't take credit for coming up with this. It's something that all creatives do, whether it's conscious or not. I really recommend you checking out this book, Steal Like an Artist. It goes over this concept in great detail. In fact, I'll leave an affiliate link in the description of this video so you can go and grab it from Amazon. I think it's like 10 bucks or something. But it's a great read, so I recommend checking it out. If you want to download the Ableton project from this video, there's a link in the description that goes to my Patreon. Patreon's one of the best ways that you can support me and support the channel. So check it out. There's a whole lot of content on there. Anyway, let's make some beats. All right guys, so here we are inside Ableton and I've put together a little drum beat to demonstrate this way of coming up with ideas when you're a bit stuck. I know from my coaching and mentoring that this is a stage that a lot of people get to. They make a cool beat, maybe a bass line, and then they're not really sure what to go to next and how to go about getting ideas. Everyone gets creative blocks. So let's just dive in, have a look, and I'll show you a technique. So first things first, let's just take a listen to the beat. We've got a kick, couple of claps layered up, some groovy kind of hats. I've programmed the main ones and then used a few loops to add some additional flavor to it. Then we've got some percussion, which is just a little loop. Pretty quiet in the mix, just adding some texture. And then a couple of percussion hits. Just kind of doing a call and response type thing. So all the sounds in this have come from my sample pack. Link up here if you want to go grab a copy. Very usable, as you can see. And then I've got this little vocal, which is just coming from a loop. And I've got a little bit of delay on it. So it's just playing like a little one shot from this loop. That's just really adding some texture in there, giving a bit of a vibe. So I'm not going to go into detail about the drums. Uh, there's a link in the description if you want to grab that project and go through it in your own time. So onto the main point of the video. Let's say I've got to this point, I've made this beat, I think it's cool, but I don't really know what to do next. I'm having a bit of a creative block. So a technique that you can use is to go through your kind of music library, um, you know, find some tracks that you like and reference elements from within those tracks. And so you're basically kind of stealing them but combining them in a unique way. What I've done is I've identified four tracks that have four different elements that I'm gonna try and use in this track. Let's just take a listen through those and I'll show you them. So first we've got a bass line. This is the original track. I've pitched these to be in the key of the track. So the key of the track is D minor and I've pitched these to be in D minor. So they might sound a little bit strange. Cool, like pushing bass line. What I've done is I've used the envelope on the clip volume to just like isolate the bass elements from this loop. So what I can do is play that with my beat and see how it sounds. Sounds good to me. So I'm gonna go on and like recreate that. Next up, we've got this ARP. So here's the original. So I'm only playing little tiny bits of these for copyright purposes. So it's this kind of like melody, marimba, glockenspiel kind of sound. Then I've isolated it here. So we're gonna do something like that. Uh, next, I've got these chord stabs. And isolated. Let's take a listen with the with the rest of the track. So 
Sounds cool. It's definitely in the vibe that I'm going for. Uh, next up, I've got these plucks. So it's this do 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 repetitive thing. So I think that could be cool with the track. It's hard to quite tell with that one as there's a lot of things layered and it's in a breakdown so there's quite a bit of atmosphere and reverb but that was the place in the track where the sound was the most prominent. So what I've done is I've already been through and kind of worked out the MIDI for these things and the way I do that is a combination of like listening, this isolation of the sound in the volume envelope and then also using this notes preset on the Spectrum device. So I can play this bass line and look at the notes and see that it's playing D. I mean, I've pitched it to the key of the track, so another example with the chord stabs. So I can see there that it's playing D and A, and then it's got like the D as a sub as well. Maybe that's adding to the sound, not sure. Maybe we'll use the sub, I'm not too sure. But I can see what notes it's playing. So that's something that can be helpful for finding out the notes that's played in a reference track or something like that if you're trying to recreate something. So I've been through and created the MIDI, but I've got very bland sounds in these. It's just the default diva patch there. So let's start with the bass. What I'll do is create a new MIDI track. For this one, I'll just copy the MIDI pattern over. So what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna look in my sample pack for a bass sound. Oh, that's nice. So that could be cool, let's throw that in. Everything in there is tuned to C, so that means we can just play it and it'll play the correct notes. If you're using a one shot that's not at C, what I would suggest doing is using the transpose. So that control is here if you're not using like a rack like mine uh, and just transposing it down. So let's say that it was playing D, I would bring it down two semitones so that it's at C and then play my melody. And then I know that the tone that's coming from the sample is gonna correspond with the notes that I play. Anyway, let's take a listen to that. Whoa. Add a bit of side chain. Okay, so I got pretty lucky with that sound. Uh, I'll just roll off a little bit of the sub here. All right, so we're off to a good start. Bass line, done. <laughs> I might just add a little bit of reverb on there. Okay, I would assume they're not all gonna be this easy, but who knows. All right, so bass, done. Now let's try this up. Okay, so I'm gonna copy the MIDI pattern over and let's search in the Ableton packs for a mallet sound. Core library, devices, instruments, sounds, mallets, cool. Oh, that sounds nice, bright marimba, drop it on. All right, so let's have a listen. Maybe let's just try pitching that down. So Command A to select all and Shift down arrow to move it down an octave. Nice. We've got some options here about how to tune that. So just playing with those, I already have some ideas about how I might be able to go about automating that in the arrangement. Basically like using some of the, using like this tone and brightness or distortion to kind of create some intensity in a build up or something like that. So let's add a bit of reverb here, take that off. The reason I do that is so that I've got like a uniformed reverb on my sounds. So everything sounds like it's in the same space. I'll just show you that, it's from my template. It's this here, synth verb on send B, same that I use in every project. So. Maybe 
maybe I'll just try adding a bit of delay to add some kind of atmosphere with that. Nice. All right, so that's cool. Let's move on to this chord stab. For this, I'm going to add a wavetable. Now, uh, let me just copy over the MIDI and have a listen. All right, so I know that for that kind of sound, it's probably gonna be a, a saw wave. So I'm gonna put a saw wave here and let's take a listen. So a lot more harmonic content there. I'll bring the filter down. Add a bit of drive. Somewhere about three and a half seems to be like a magic number for this. Okay, so I'm just gonna shape the sound a little bit with the amp envelope. So I'll open the filter a little bit. So what I'm trying to do there is match the shape of the sound over time, just the actual sound itself. Then I'm gonna further sculpt that with the filter. So let's use some of this envelope two. I'll just open up the matrix and send envelope two to the filter frequency. So in the reference track, there was a sub as well. So let's try adding that. Okay, I'll turn that down a bit. All right, so what's happening there is the sub is playing this chord as well. So what I'm gonna do is take off these notes and then I'm going to add another oscillator, also a sawtooth, and this one is gonna be playing at seven semitones above because we're playing, oh, yeah, we're playing, no, I've done the wrong one there. We're playing D and we want it to play the A as well. And what I'll do is with this one, I'll turn it down a little bit. So now I can check with the EQ. And I can see that frequency wise, it's looking quite similar to the sound that we had in the reference track. So let's take a listen. All right, maybe let's try some unison. Bring the filter down a bit. Let's add a little bit of delay. All right, and one more thing I can do is add this MIDI tools rack and add a little bit of random variation with the velocity. Now I'll click on the filter, open up wavetable, and I can see here velocity to filter. So I'll just add a little bit of that. Now we can hear that when it's playing at higher velocities, the filter's a bit more open, and when it's playing at lower velocities, the filter's a bit more closed. The last thing I'm gonna do for the sound is add on a saturator, and let's just try the a bit warmer preset. Always a good one. And maybe a little bit of compression, since we've got some different volume levels with that velocity. So 
Sounds good. All right, let's try these plucks. So I've got the MIDI here copied over and let's just go to my sample pack again and we'll go to the music shots and Let's try that. Uh, right, okay, I, know I need to do the same thing here. So I'll just mute that so it's not playing a chord. All right, a bit of reverb. Take out some of the sub and shape the sound a little bit. Let's try that up an octave. So I can hear that this might be cool with a bit of an interesting delay on it. Maybe a quarter note ping pong. Let's try dotted. Okay, so let's put a bit of sidechain on. Okay, so that sounds quite cool as well. Let's start trying to combine these things and see if they work together. Let's try these chords down an octave. Right, so that's more the vibe we were going for. Really nice now. But I'm just hearing that it's kind of clashing with the bass a little bit now. Because it's got a lot of kind of sub in there even though it's even though i'm cutting it out it's kind of implied because it's where the fundamental frequencies are so what if we try take this bass and we flip it around so let's put that like that try that Or, I like the, no, uh, I'm not sure, okay. Let's take a listen to that. Okay, so I think I like the original bass line better, but the chords could work better with the bass line. So, let's try a new chord pattern. Something like... All right, that's cool. Uh, what about with a little bit of delay on that? So I'm going to put that at an eighth note. I just want it to be a little bit. And let's put some LFO on because we're playing on the downbeat now. Okay, I take this delay off. Now let's change it to an eighth note dotted. Take that feedback down.
Cool, so now we've taken the original sound and we've adapted it to be something new. Let's try this ARP as well. Okay, so that's not really working for me. I think the other things are working better. So there we go, I'm developing that on, I'm kind of changing it around, making it a bit different, trying variations of the sounds that we've created based on the reference tracks, and just really starting to try and make it my own, make it something original and unique. But I was able to get there by stealing ideas from other tracks, right? The end result is gonna sound like something original, something that I've made. And I've used these reference tracks as jumping off points for inspiration when I'm feeling stuck and uninspired. So if you're interested to have a look in a bit more detail at the drums and what's going on here and the elements that I've made, then there'll be a link in the description to my Patreon where you can go and download the whole project file. So get in there, have a look around, enjoy it. There you go guys, I hope you enjoyed that and I'm sure you can see that this is a really valuable technique. So why not try implementing it next time that you're stuck? Let me know in the comments how you get on. If you enjoyed this video, but you're looking for more ways to overcome creative blocks, then check out this video that I made on five ways to come up with fresh melody ideas. All right, guys, well, that's it for me today. We'll catch you next time. Peace.